Hello and welcome to our Wednesday Bible Lunch. I'm so glad that you could join us today for just a little time to dig into the Word and to be together even though we are um, meeting each other and greeting each other through a computer screen. Um, it is just a great time that we can come together and to dig deeper into the into the Word. When um, I was talking to Vince about what we were going to be talking about this week. And he said, we're going to be getting back into Max Lucado's He Chose the Nails. And um, that I would be starting with the fourth session. And when I looked in my book to see what session four was, the title of session four is He Chose to Love Us Forever. And so without even reading my chapter, I knew in my heart what verse I wanted to talk about today. And it's a very, very well-known verse, and it comes from the book of John. It's a verse that I'm sure everybody watching has heard. You might have learned it in confirmation. And I'm guessing that most of you, if not all of you, can recite this verse from memory. So you've probably guessed, we're going to be looking at John 3.16. So say it with me. John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. That's right. Whoever believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. When I think about that verse, I think about how God chose to love us forever by sending his son to die for us. And there are probably many, many reasons why this is such a well-known verse and why um, we all love this verse, because it tells us just how much God really loves us. He loves us so much that he gave his own son for us. And all we have to do is believe and we'll have eternal life. Wow, that is love. But I wonder if there's anyone out there that's kind of like me and needs to learn the context um, that this verse comes in. And so I wonder how many of us actually know the 15 verses that come before John 3, 16. What was going on when this verse was written? So today for our Bible study, I want to take a closer look at the first 15 verses of the third book of John, because it tells us about um, a conversation that Jesus was having with a man named Nicodemus. And this conversation, it's a witness to Christ's invitation to us. And so much more than just that one well-known verse. So let's take out our Bibles and let's turn to John chapter 3. And I am reading today from the NIV, and the heading for the chapter, for chapter three in my Bible says, Jesus teaches Nicodemus. So John chapter three, I hope you're there, verse one through 15. Now there was a Pharisee, a man named Nicodemus, who was a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could perform the signs you are doing if God were not with him. And Jesus replied, very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. How can someone be born when they are old? Nicodemus asked. Surely they cannot enter a second time into their mother's womb to be born. And Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, 
no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and the spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. How can this be? Nicodemus asked. You are Israel's teacher, said Jesus, and do you not understand these things? Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and we testify to what we have seen, but Still, you people do not accept our testimony. I have spoken to you of earthly things and you do not believe. How then will you believe if I speak of heavenly things? No one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven, the Son of Man. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. So these first 15 verses in John chapter 3 set us up for that verse that we all know, um, verse 16. And so I think oftentimes we are tempted in in our scripture reading to really pull out scriptures that that we know well and we use those or we go back to those same scriptures and because verse 16 is so well known and so popular i think we're tempted to focus on it and to ignore the rest it's almost like we've made it a one verse slogan for why we are Christians, but there is so much more for us to learn when we think about this conversation between Nicodemus and Jesus. If we go back just to verse one, we learn that Nicodemus, he's a leader of the Jewish people. He's a man of wealth and he has come to see Jesus. But what does he want? Is he seeking the truth? Or is he like other Pharisees? And is he coming and seeking to discredit Jesus? You know, Jesus was always surrounded by people. But the people who surrounded Jesus were, were ordinary people. They were fishermen and farmers and just, just regular, ordinary people just like us. But Nicodemus was not an ordinary person. He was a man of wealth. He was a man of privilege. So did he come to condemn Jesus? Or did he come because he wanted to learn more about the Lord and about all of these things that Jesus was teaching? As we go on to verse 2, we see that he came to Jesus at night. So he came to Jesus in the darkness. Now, it could be that he's coming at nighttime, that he's coming in the darkness because he wants to have some, some quiet, uninterrupted conversation with Jesus because we know that Jesus tends to attract crowds. Or it could be that Nicodemus comes at night because he doesn't want anybody to see him. Because being seen with Jesus might actually hurt his reputation. And Jesus was kind of this newcomer and was seen as a little bit of a troublemaker by the Pharisees. So maybe he came for a quiet time or, or maybe he came because he didn't want it, anybody to see him meeting with Jesus. Or maybe we could think about it in a different way. Did Nicodemus come under the darkness of not knowing Jesus? Think about those two meanings of darkness. He did come to Jesus at nighttime when it was dark outside, 
So maybe it was to save his reputation. Maybe it was just so he could find a quiet time. Maybe it was so nobody else would see him and know that he was talking to Jesus. But we think about what it means to come in the darkness. And we know that Nicodemus also was in the dark about Jesus. Sometimes when we say, you know, that someone is in the dark, we mean that they don't really understand what is going on around them. And there have been many times that I have been in the dark about things. And I actually, there have been times in my life when I felt like I was really in the dark about Jesus. My, I grew up going to the United Methodist Church. I was baptized, confirmed, and married in the Greenfield United Methodist Church. That's what I consider my home church. And I, I hope that I have some friends from Greenfield, maybe even listening today. And I had a wonderful upbringing. But it wasn't until after I was in my early 30s that I realized that there were a lot of things that I was in the dark about when it came to Jesus. There were lots of things that I had heard, that I had memorized, that I had learned, but I was still in the dark. I didn't know what it was that I was supposed to understand. And so it makes me wonder, is Nicodemus in the dark? Because he doesn't know who Jesus is. That's something I think we can all relate to. We know people, and maybe even ourselves, but we know people who are still in the dark about Jesus. Good people, responsible people, people who are living great lives, but they do not know Jesus. So as we go through today, maybe we need to be thinking about some of the people in our lives who are in the dark and do not know Jesus. So going on, then Nicodemus says, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could perform the signs you're doing if God were not with him. So I think Nicodemus was trying to be respectful. He calls Jesus a teacher that has come from God, and, and he acknowledges that Jesus is working by God's power. But how Jesus responds, I think, is so interesting. It's almost like Jesus responds in a way that, that seems like he did not even hear him because Jesus responds with, very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they're born again. See, Jesus doesn't respond to Nicodemus's reference of signs, but instead, Jesus, the great teacher, the greatest teacher of all time, Jesus begins to teach Nicodemus about the kingdom of God. And when Jesus says, very truly I tell you, or in another Bible that I read, it says, truly, truly I tell you. So when he says, very truly I tell you, I've learned that that means that there's something that we need to be listening to because whatever he says next is going to be big. And so he says, very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. Jesus says no one can belong to the kingdom of God unless they're born again. But it seems that, that Nicodemus still misunderstands Jesus and takes his words very literally. It's like they are talking on two different levels. Like Nicodemus is thinking literally, but Jesus is talking metaphorically. So Nicodemus asks, how can someone be born when they are old? Surely they cannot enter a second time into their mother's womb to be born. And so Nicodemus is taking this very literally, like, really, how can you be born again if you've already been born? And so Nicodemus is struggling to understand because he would think of the kingdom of God as a heavenly reward for um, something that he has, he would think of the kingdom of God as this heavenly reward that he has already earned. 
because he believes that the kingdom of God is the reward for a life well lived, a life lived by the laws. He thinks that his entry into the kingdom of God, into the kingdom of God is a done deal, right? He thinks he's already made it there because he's lived his life and he's obeyed the laws. He doesn't understand that the kingdom of heaven is a gift. It is a gift from God. It's not something that we can earn by doing good deeds, by, by making sure we go to church every week, and by being nice to people. It's not something that we can earn. Nicodemus has spent his life obeying laws, and now he hears that there is something more that it's not enough to be religious. So no wonder he chooses to hear Jesus' words as having to do with the, the physical rather than the spiritual rebirth or being born in the spirit. And so Jesus says again, very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and the spirit. Now Nicodemus is really confused. First, Jesus says that you cannot see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Then he says you cannot enter the kingdom of God without being born of the spirit. And if that is true, was Jesus saying that this kingdom of God might be accessible to anyone, anyone who is born again, anyone who is born of the Spirit. So could the kingdom of God be accessible to those who break the laws, the laws of the religion that Nicodemus has spent his whole life obeying? Could someone be able to see the kingdom of God even if they broke a law or were a sinner. Nicodemus is showing that he hasn't been born in the spirit. He is one of the leading teachers of all Judaism, and he himself is not one of God's children. Nicodemus could not understand anything spiritual because he did not believe in Jesus. Nicodemus could not understand heavenly things because he was entirely living an earthly life. But here's the good news. Jesus knew Nicodemus' heart, and Jesus knows our hearts too. Jesus knew what Nicodemus's view of salvation was. He knew everything about this man. He knows everything about us. Jesus knew that as religious as Nicodemus was, his religion would not be enough. He knew that Nicodemus must be born again. Now notice, Jesus doesn't tell Nicodemus how he should live. But instead, what he's telling him is how to have eternal life. You see, our faith is this ongoing work of the Holy Spirit, who, as Jesus says, is like the wind that blows wherever it pleases. You can hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. We know what it's like on a windy day. We can't actually see the wind, but we see what it can do. We see it blowing the trees, and we've seen sometimes um, that it's even blowing branches off of the trees. So Jesus tells Nicodemus that that's how it is with the Spirit of God. We might not be able to see it, but we know how powerful it is. We know what it can do. 
And so again, Nicodemus says, how can this be? How can a man be born again when he is old? Nicodemus is still thinking that this rebirth is physical rather than spiritual. You see, Jesus is talking to a man who is a teacher of Israel. It's a man who was, who was given his whole life to studying the Old Testament. And Jesus knew the Old Testament too. Jesus knew that, that Isaiah had spoken about new life from God, that Jeremiah had predicted a, a new creation would be given, and that, that Ezekiel said that God would take out the old heart of stone and give you a new heart. And all through the Old Testament, there are statements about a new birth, a new beginning, a new creation, a new life that would come as a gift of God to those who would humbly, without pride, receive it as something they desperately needed. So Jesus says to Nicodemus, how can this be? How can you, a teacher of Israel, not know about these things? But this time, Jesus makes reference to a story that Nicodemus would know. Like Nicodemus would have known the story quite well, the story about Moses. And, and just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, Jesus says, so must the Son of Man be lifted up that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him and then we get to that life-changing verse that verse that we've all known our whole lives john 3 verse 16 for god so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. And listen to verse 17. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. You see, friends, this is a hard one for us all to learn, but it's the most important thing we can ever learn unless we have new life unless we are born again in the spirit unless we have new life we cannot see the kingdom of god that is the word of jesus that new life is available to all of us anyone anyone can be born again if we will acknowledge that we need Jesus and if we will receive him. That change in us comes from the power of God himself. We might not see it, it's like the wind, but the Holy Spirit comes into us and changes us. That change in us occurs because of the power of God. And Nicodemus needed to know that everyone needs to know that salvation is the most important part of our life it is where eternal life begins so if you're joining us today and and you know that there's more to it than just being religious then there's that there's more to it there's more for us than just this life here on earth if you are living in the dark and you want to know jesus you can be saved and have eternal life forever for god so loved the world the whole world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Now, I was talking with Vince just this morning and he asked me, do you ever substitute your name in for the word world? And I said, yes, I've done that. And I've done that with other scriptures as well. So as we end today, 
Let's try that. I want you to say the scripture, John 3, 6 with John 3, 16 with me. But instead of saying that God so loved the world, I want you to say God so loved. And I want you to put your name in. For God so loved Jackie that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Friends, I ask you to say that over and over and over and over again until you know that it is the truth. And friends, I ask that if you are still in the dark about Jesus, that it's time to come out in the light. It's time to meet Jesus. It's time to come to church so that you can hear the word. It's time to get out your Bibles and to dig in. Because, Jesus, because God loved us so much that he sent his son Jesus so that we could be born again in the spirit and that we could have eternal life. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this time today. We thank you for this time that you give us to, to really focus and to block everything else out that's going on in the world and just to be able to focus on you, to be able to focus on you and your love. Lord, we thank you for the greatest gift of all. We thank you for the gift of your son, Jesus. We know the great sacrifices that were made so that we could be found not guilty of our sins because Jesus died on the cross to take away our sins. And Lord, we thank you so much for that. Lord, we lift up everyone who is watching today, whether they're watching today at noon or they're watching some other time. Lord, we just thank you. We thank you for, um, for your word. And we thank you for using your word to teach us. Lord, we thank you for Jesus, the greatest teacher of all. And Lord, if there's anyone that needed to hear today that they can be reborn by the Holy Spirit. Lord, I hope that you will help them find this and that you will help them find a church and find a Bible so that they too may be born again through Christ and that through Christ they may find salvation and they may find eternal life with you. Lord, we lift all this up in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Um, a couple reminders. That reminder, um, Bible study. Vince did Bible study from He Chose the Nails this morning in uh, Watch Here. And I'm going to be leading the session Thursday evening at 6.30 at the church in Delta. So all are welcome. We'll start at 6.30 and we will be starting with session four. He chose us to, he chose to love us forever. And then if you would like to um, join us Sunday morning, I will be sharing my testimony, my journey of how I've gone from being in the dark about Jesus to being born again, to, to being where I am today where I just can't get enough of Jesus in my life. And so I'll be sharing my testimony and what, what John 3.16 has meant to me in my life at um, nine o'clock in Delta at the Delta Church on Sunday morning, and then at 10.30 at the church in Watch here on Sunday. If you are not able to join us in person, either in Delta or Watch here on Sunday, we hope that you will join our live stream, which you'll find on the Watch Here United Methodist Church starting at 1030 a.m. on Sunday. May you all be blessed, and I hope to see you all again soon. God be with you. Have a great day.